I was never sold on Zach at all. I was never sold on Zach. I never bought into the hype. Coming into the draft, I personally felt like Justin Fields was the steal of the draft. I'm still hitting and punching the air at the Atlanta <laughs> Falcons organization because I wish they would have picked him. I just feel like that would have been a better fit for both uh, for Atlanta as well as Justin. And then I'm looking at Atlanta. Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Uh, but I was never sold, never sold on Zach. So I agree with you there. Of course, uh, Nagy is on the hot seat. Of course, um, uh, Detroit's head coach and golf are on the hot seat. I do have a little sympathy for golf, though. And the, the sympathy I have for golf is Detroit is Detroit has to be the worst franchise in the NFL history. They have to be. They yeah, have yeah. to be because they can never. And I'm not talking about talent or either wins, losses. They never are able to capitalize on the talent that they have. Never, ever. They're never able to do it. So I'm, I kind of give Jerry Goff a pass, but I, I, I keep him in there. He's definitely on the hot seat. I can definitely see Detroit moving on from both of them by the end of this year. But there is one name I want to add to the list. Actually, there are two names I want to add to the list. And to where I'm kind of confused, I don't know which one. If there was only one seat for this organization, I don't know which one would be on it the most because that's just how the NFL works. That's Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin, and Ben Roethlisberger. I, I want to hear where you go with this because that's that's the guy that I would have put on the warm seat. <laughs> okay, okay, we can we can we could go there, but what, well, somebody got to sit down over there. Somebody got to somebody got to get some fire lit up under their rump. And I personally, the way I've seen the NFL work, I personally believe that at the end of the day, it's going to be Mike Tomlin on that hot seat. I feel like it's going to be Mike Tomlin on that hot seat simply because Mike Tomlin doesn't have the complexion for the protection. Now they've been, they ha they have a bit. Pittsburgh has never pulled that car since he's been there. And I've known Pittsburgh, you know, just my love for, the, for football throughout my life to be a stand up organization. But we all know that when it comes time, like, Black coaches and players have to overcompensate in fear of losing their spot or losing their position. And so I believe that the reason why he is on the hot seat is because his quarterback is on the hot seat. And what I mean by this is, but what I mean by that is this, if Mike Tomlin does not move on from Ben Roethlisberger, I think it is inevitable that the Pittsburgh Steelers will eventually move on from Mike Tomlin. So I feel like they're both on the hot seat. Ben Roethlisberger's arm is done. It's finished. I do not know, do not understand why the Pittsburgh Steelers did not go all in on the quarterback over these last past two seasons. I said it in a video earlier this year. I believe that Jameis Winston would have been perfect fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers, for their organization, for the way they like to play offense with that run, established run game that they already have. But I feel like after, especially after getting off to, they won 10 games in a row last year. And then they just went down, 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 down. It doesn't look great right now. And here's what I'll say. You can pick whoever you want to sit in that, sit in that warm seat. But if Mike Tomlin doesn't make a decision on the quarterback quickly, he's going to be packing his bags. That's what I believe. So for the most part, I agree 100% with what you just said uh, and all of, all of the reasons that Mike Tomlin should be on the warm seat. And the reason I put him on a warm instead of a hot seat is kind of, you know, kind of what you said about the Pittsburgh organization. They've been first class. And, you know, I, I honestly feel like Pittsburgh is an anomaly in the NFL, but the way they run their organization has always been first class. Now, the only caveat is the way they are married to Ben Roethlisberger. Now, I don't, I, that I don't understand. And to your point, if Mike Tomlin doesn't separate himself from Ben Roethlisberger, then his his seat's gonna his seat's gonna get very hot very soon. But you know, Mike Tomlin, Super Bowl coach, Mike Tomlin, you know, has always he's always been a you know a, a good coach. And I don't I wouldn't put him on a hot seat because he's Mike Tomlin. 
But this Ben Roethlisberger situation, when you've got a franchise quarterback like Ben Roethlisberger, who appears to be deteriorating, what you need to do as an organization is set the vision for the future. You don't have to get rid of them, but you at least need to set the vision for the future of the quarterback position. They have not done that. We don't know what their plan is for a quarterback beyond Ben Roethlisberger. If you look at the, uh, the, the Green Bay Packers, even at the risk of upsetting Aaron Rodgers, they were, they were setting the stage for the future. If you look at what happened in New England before Tom Brady left, even at the risk of upsetting Tom Brady, they were setting the stage for the future, actually a couple of times. So Pittsburgh has not set the stage for the future. And that does fall on Mike Tomlin, even though I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think he's going anywhere. I think that does fall on Mike Tomlin. One other coach before we move on that I will put on the uh, warm seat list sticking with my theme of not getting it right at the quarterback position is going to be right here in, uh, in, in Carolina is Ooh. Matt. Rule. And I, and the reason why is because Matt rule got desperate. <laughs> Matt rule got desperate. Uh, I don't think they wanted to call Cam Newton. I don't think they yes. wanted to, I don't think they wanted to say, Hey, Cam come back, but they got desperate and everything they tried was not working. Mm -hmm. So, you know, had, had Cam Newton maybe not signed, or uh, let's say Cam comes back and the team is not energized and the team and the you know the, the fan base is not pumped up about it, Matt Rule might be on the way out. So I, I say he was on the warm seat. That was my that was my other one. No man, I, that's uh, and you got a deal by the way, and that's everything you said. I agree one hundred percent. I will say, uh, Carolina Panthers look like a team with Cam Newton, like offensively, although they lost last week. Right, right. Um, I'm a Buccaneer. I am scared straight of Cam Newton simply because of what you know what y'all do to the Bucks. We y'all had Cam. I don't think I don't think Buccaneers beat Cam Newton five times <laughs> in his career. I'm not serious. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm serious. You guys owned us, so I I was never a fan of you guys moving and parting ways with Cam Newton. And to your Packers um, uh, assertion of um, them setting the stage with Aaron Rodgers, as bad as, because, you know, Aaron Rodgers has thrown that organization under the bus, the Packers have always been thinking about next man up because they did it with Brett Favre. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Aaron Rodgers – was was wait had, what do you I think he actually sat for three years. Three years, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's behind. True. So great organizations are always thinking about the future. Those are the people that are on the hot seat. Love it. You got a deal.